the turbulent times, a nation's expectant youth referred to him as Junior Jesus. He was a savior. Honest person with high integrity. Hero. Revolutionary. Just an ordinary, hungry, screaming Ghanaian who wants to contribute. Visionary. Difficulties were dissolving into chaos and you needed somebody to actually take the bull by the horn. Patriotic. Let me assure you that Africa can work. It is up to the rest of the world to look beyond the prejudiced and sensational images and recognize Africa as the continent of the future. So there was something about him which you could recognize so you wouldn't question what he said. This iconic figure rallied a nation. He meant well for Ghana. If he has to pay the ultimate price, he was ready to do that for the good of this country. His main interest is about the people. Yet, divided opinions. Nobody heard Papa Jay's side of the story. Jerry John Rawlins. Testimonies to a Patriot. A government has the obligation, the moral responsibility to be seen to be fighting against corruption all the time. Having handed over from AFRC to civilian government in 1979, Jerry Rawlings believed government of the people must be through a representation of the people. All of you assembled here are also the government because the PNDC is a government that is or should be run by the people. Rawlings felt that democracy had already been established even during the PNDC days. Don't forget the decentralization process has started I think somewhere in 1985 and that what the Fourth Republican Constitution did was just to extend and document the process with a written constitution. We surprised us but pleased us. Surprised us because we didn't expect the military to give up power once they've seized it. But pleased us that at least he is paying respect to the political conventions. He believed firmly that if people are empowered in the political decision-making process and also um, we have an inclusive governance system where apart from the decision-making the wealth is distributed fairly there will be progress. This was evident in the establishment of the National Commission for Democracy in the early days of PNDC and the elaborate local government system. That rhetoric and slogan of power to the people was the catchphrase. So um, to translate that, to translate that, he called for decentralization of the decision-making process. National development, or if you like, the district administrative authority to, from the center to the grassroots. Yeah, so we're moving both the power from the national to the district, where the districts will take control of their own administrative affairs and political affairs. So if you like, they were giving some special assignment, both politically and administrative, if you like, also some from quasi-legal authority. If your name is not on the voters' register, you cannot vote, and neither can you present yourself as a candidate for election. District-level elections were held in 1988 several years before the first presidential and parliamentary elections in 1992. In as much as 
He started as a military ruler. He accepted the inevitability of uh, constitutional rule. We do not have a clear cut, if you like, blueprint, which was spelled or which spelled out at time that within the next four or five years, we're going to return the country to democratic rule. But the essence of his leadership was that this country had gone back several you know, years. In fact, more than a decade that we had economic stagnation. So there was a need for us to, if you like, try and build a foundation for a takeoff. Eventually, Jesse Sanan had to go around the whole country, collect view collected views, uh, came back, presented his report, and according to the report, the people who like uh, multi-party democracy, because uh, there was nothing better than that. Extensive study of democratic systems worldwide led to the setup of the Consultative Assembly the drafting of the 1992 constitution, which gave birth to the Fourth Republic of Ghana. The contributions to the laws of Ghana, we will have to start off with a fundamental law. That's our constitution. We have a constitution which in many, many ways stands shoulder, in my view, head and shoulders above most constitutions in this world and uh, a constitution which um, brings, into, brings to bear practically every human rights norm. Initially, he, he came onto the scene through the barrel of, of guns and, and, and scariness and uh, fire and broomstone. And uh, so many things went on the constitution then, the then constitution was abrogated. We were ruled by decree. As time went on, if you trace the, the, our laws, they got better, they got more considerate. And then once we, we became a constitutional democracy again, and, and let's face it, there were people, other people he came and met by who, uh, on the international scene, particularly on the African scene, who also came in by, by, by guns and bullets. And they never changed their, their character, yes. But over the years, for me, it, on a conceptual basis, it's from one extreme to almost an, an opposite extreme, where a life that is guarded and safeguarded by the law became available and became enforceable. He must be commended for um, the swift manner in which he was able to shed of the, the military approach and, uh, and then led the country in a constitutional dispensation. I think the people are not far from right by saying he is a father of the Fourth Republic because the Fourth Republic was established in 1993 after the, the, uh, the elections in 1992. So we credit him, well, he built the foundation and ensured that we were not going to return back to the old ways where there were military interventions. So I think that those who credit him, and of course I also do believe in that the philosophy, that he should be credited as the father of the Fourth Republic. The formation of the National Democratic Congress, NDC, marked an outward confirmation of Rawlings' adaptation to party politics. After a successful election as president, the military uniform gave way to a new civilian look a new perspective, but the same firm principles of probity and accountability. The preamble of our national constitution reflect the principles which he held sacred.
the principles which were the touchstone of the June 4 revolution and 31st revolution, probity and accountability. The belief that an elected or appointed person has a duty to account for his or her stewardship to the people on whose sovereignty he exists as an elected or appointed functionary of the state. He believed that if we did that, the, 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 and with the confidence he had in people, we should be able to manage the affairs of this country uh, very well. President Jerry John Rawlings approved an extensive national agenda to fully develop key sectors by the year 2020. The Vision 2020 was a beautiful plan. Uh, this year would have seen its fruition. Unfortunately, it was not to be. You know, for a vision to be successful, uh, it must be, number one, it must be leader-initiated. Second thing is that it must be shared and supported. The third thing is that it must be comprehensive and detailed. The fourth and final thing is that it must be uh, positive and inspiring. Now, Jerry John Rollins being the leader, he initiated it and he spread it and we all knew what it was about. The second point, shared and supported. It was shared, it was supported, but there was, in my view, a lack of understanding. The third point about it being uh, comprehensive and detailed, it was. Uh, Accra was going to be the gateway to West Africa uh, the transport sector, uh, Ghana Airways, the ports, everything was tuned into that. And it was positive and it was inspiring. The one problem was that those who were supposed to be implementing it didn't really understand. They didn't, they, they, it was a very detailed plan and you had to actually go into the details of it because it involved agriculture, it involved uh, the transport system, it involved uh, even the health sector because as you know a lot of people come from the neighboring countries to, to have well, medical tourism here. So it, it was all there. It's just that the details of it which needed to be worked wasn't done properly or they weren't done properly. And uh, a lot of them frankly thought that oh in the year 2020 everything would just arrive which of course it didn't. And that was the failure of it. But to have someone at that young age uh, understand that such a vision was, uh, was, was, was doable. And, and of course, the, 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 the 2020 has some significance. Your eyesight is 2020, means you have perfect eyesight. So it was very well chosen. It's just that it missed the mark, not because uh, he failed in communicating it or leader initiating it. It was because uh, the implementation of it by the, the, the players, the individual players, they were the, the ones that failed it. When he gave me my credentials, letter of appointment, it was Chienu. Uh, he called everybody Chienu. I know I'm giving you a very big job. You probably are worried that you don't know enough about government. But I can assure you that when my colleagues and I took over the government of this country, none of us knew how to run a government. But we survived. And I'm sure you will also survive. Just be honest. The only thing I am going to ask of you is Clean the city up. Accra is too filthy. Please clean it up. For that, I'm going to give you one person. Salifu Amankwa. Have you heard of him? I said, yes, I have heard of Salifu Amankwa. He said, I'm sure you heard a lot of awful things about him. But Salifu Amankwa is absolutely necessary if you're going to keep order in this city. So that's my gift to you. You know, he, he was a firm believer in discipline, okay? 
One example like that I can remember. If the gutter in front of your house was dirty, you would be responsible for that. When you are called by President Rawlings, you have to ask yourself whether you've messed up somewhere or <laughs> something <laughs> on toilet has happened. It will not mince words if he feels that what you have done is wrong. He will tell you what you've done is wrong. I remember one day we were going for a cabinet meeting and I saw one of my senior members in the ante room of the cabinet. And I was wondering, ah, this man doesn't come for cabinet meetings. Why is he in the ante room? We're just about getting ready for the cabinet meeting. Normally, the vice president was chairing cabinet. He will only come in when it is but it's very crucial. So, not like quite long after we have started, then the door opened and then he came in. All of us stood up. He said, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Then he said, yeah, you, I hear a problem which cropped up in the northern region. And we ask that some supplies should be sent to the northern region to ameliorate the situation and cushion their problems. You have di diverted that, those items. And then I said, say, no. He said, are you sure you are not, you are not you are telling the truth? He said, yeah, say. He said, well, let's see. Then he taxed some people, some members of the cabinet to say, let's make sure we investigate. But my friend, mind you, if it turns out that you are culpable, you know the consequence. So I'm only trying to illustrate the fact that if it is right, you are right. If it is wrong, you are wrong. Some people can even go and lie ahead of you. But trust me, he will give you the opportunity to tell your story, right? And that's how he was. One good thing about um, 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 uh, Flyleft and Rawlings is that um, if you work with them, he always shields you. He protects you. He makes sure that the bullet will not touch you. Or if he sees that there's um, that people are trying to harm you, he, he will protect you and you could rely on that. And he maintained that all throughout uh, the 44 years that I, um, I worked with him. I asked him once that, Mr. President, so you, have, you spend so much time on corruption. How, how much time do you think a, a president should spend on corruption if you are to eradicate it or to, to bring it down? He said you need to spend 70% of your time. 70% of your time if you really want to check corruption. So what is going on in Ghana since he left? Most of the time, I don't think most of the president have appreciated that. Maybe he didn't say that to them, or they didn't know that. But his message to me, and I guess anybody who was interested in hearing this, if you want to stop corruption, spend about 70% of your time trying to work against it. Because everybody is trying something, you know, that you have to check them for. He believed in the fact that People should not be oppressed because of their circumstances, because they are poor, because somebody else is rich. That should not be the reason to oppress another person. He was very passionate about that, very sincere. And whatever he believed, he believed sincerely. Had an interesting character. See, if, if, from, from, from our side, you think he's, you take him as a wicked man, soldier, you know, who never cared about anybody. But when you move close to him, well, he was, he had that sympathetic spirit in him. I was, I was surprised, you know, full of understanding full of uh, that sympathy, to sympathize with people, helping people, you know, and then, see, I think that was at the back of his mind when he made that we wanted to help Ghana. He made himself available to understand that in case of any misunderstanding, so you could always consult him. Extremely nice man. The one had two figures in one body. And I mentioned that his military training and attributes was an act. But if you go into him carefully, 
sit with him face to face, chat with him, you will see that he has what is called a contrite heart, compassionate heart, loving heart. He cares for humanity. To talk about what he has been doing for the people, it is difficult for me to say because he will do it without announcing them. If you talk to him with reason, understanding, Dr. Rollins, J.J. Rollins, who listen to you and even contribute, assist you, achieve your aim. As long as you could convince him about certain things that you wanted to do, he was very supportive. And that you would see that he also gave quite a lot of that support to his wife, and which made it easier for some of us to also move around with her and uh, also help her in the empowerment process for other women. You know, he was a very serious soldier. He minded uh, the Air Force business, I think, very much. Um, and uh, he loved his horses, the fast cars, the, you know. Uh, but um, nightclubbing and things like that, I didn't see him very much uh, <laughs> in in that theater. Jerry was able to make life very enjoyable. The surroundings, if, if you're around him and he's happy, you, 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 really, you really be happy and it will be, it's always nice when you are in his company. Nice being in his company, you know, and you know, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic man. Not long ago, I had this wonderful, wonderful kinky, wonderful kinky with really good fish, okra, and, and this stew. And when President Rollins is eating his okra kinky, and if you call him, he wouldn't mind you. And then when he was eating, he asked, sir, who prepared the, the, the stew? I, I prepared it, but I said, my nephew did it. I want to talk to him. Then I called my nephew, I said, President Rollins, I want to talk to you. Then he told the, this nephew of mine, Chief, you know, my skin is fair, but I'm not bony. When I'm making my stew, let the pepper be hot for a black man, not for, not for a white man. <laughs> and you know, here is a man so, so, so open, so, so, there's nothing to hide in President Rawlings. But again, I tell you that people didn't know him. And, and today, in fact, until he died, he was talking about this election. That you hope that it will be free, to be it will be it will be peaceful and so on, you know. And today, to me, the biggest biggest uh, tribute we can pay him is to have this election end beautifully, that in the valley. Because people didn't think that he invested so much in our from our to our peace and prosperity as a nation. Because he brought this fourth republic into being. If it failed, he would have seen it as a personal failure. As the end of President Rawlins' second term of office drew closer, Ghanaians were convinced that their young democracy of the Fourth Republic had gained roots. Jerry Rawlings was for the first time in two decades preparing to embrace life as a private citizen. A new political era was to be ushered in. A new and uncertain period of his eventful life was approaching. People like to make all kinds of claims about Rawlings that he didn't want to hand over. Had we, any one of us, dared to suggest that we're going to stay on for one more day, would have lost the complete support of the masses. Still to come, from a visionary leader of a proud nation, inspiring many across Africa and the world. Icon statesman and a global champion on Rawlings. Testimonies to a Patriot.